first, let's give ourselves a hand for opening, grand opening. All praises, thank the Lord. It's been a long time coming. Long time coming. All praises. This is uh, truly a fulfillment of, of the prophecy in uh, Ezekiel. Can we get that real quick, uh, Captain uh, Zakai? Ezekiel, is it 1611 or 1116? I always get them mixed up. You know what I'm talking about, Cap? Ezekiel 11:16. Thank you. I got it. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 11 and verse 16. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen. Talking about slavery. Go ahead. And although I have scattered them among the countries, mm -hmm. yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. So the Lord prophesied this thing in the last days. He would be a little sanctuary in the countries whether we sojourn. So this is a small sanctuary, like many of our IUIC sanctuaries. And it's only going to, they're only going to get bigger and better. Is that right? Yes. That's right? All praises, all praises. Today we're going to talk about tribulation, a need for leaders. Tribulation, a need for leaders. We're going to open up in Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. Many of you may or may not know the trial it's currently underway for our sister, Joy Morgan. They have the brother, Shofar L, on trial for uh, murder without any body, any evidence. So that's what's going on right now. But God's will be done, and we stand on God's side at all times. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay, I hope so. I hope so. All right. We got Captain O'Shea is out there. Captain Isaac is out there. Um, my intent was to go, but they asked me not to come because in Britain they have foolish laws where you can make an, uh, an accusation on someone and you can be held without reason. So the accusation was that I allegedly put some type of a hit out on the sister. Where they got that from? I don't know. I want to see that. I want to see where's the audio of the video. Where did I say this? Who got guns? <laughs> the hell is this? Or whatever. So that's what's going on. So Captain Isaac and Captain Hosea are there for us. All praise to the Lord. And I pray that God's will be done. And it will be done. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, and the 27th verse. And I want you to know also, also, I know some of y'all who are teetering the fence with people that leave this truth. And you say, well, they're still my friends. They're still my brothers and sisters. No, they're not. Some of them have went out to uh, London and right now testifying lies that we abuse the women, that if a woman wants to go to the movies, we don't allow her. What sister have we told she can't go to the movies? I was like, what the hell? Now, see, y'all want to know, I'm, I'm very in tune with what's going on out there. And it's lie after lie after, from people that were in the congregation. Unbelievable, unbelievable. I just let God's will be done. I just pray a swift judgment comes in these evil, ratchet Negroes. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. I want to start at verse 27. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 27. And the Lord just shall... Just excuse me if I burst into... Uh, uh, what's the word? A rant. I'm just very annoyed just thinking about all this evil and foolishness. So y'all have to... Excuse me. Now, where are we going? Deuteronomy 4, 27. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the, among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. So Moses prophesied the Israelites being scattered among the nations. Talking about slavery, and it includes, yes, the transatlantic slave trade. Though many Edomite scholars say, no, the prophecies ended with Rome. That's a lie. Uh, how do we know that that's true or false? Let me see. Where would you go in the scripts to know that the curses of Deuteronomy 28 did not end with Rome? Who has the answer? All the way in the back. All the way in the back. Let me hear what you got. Give me your name, and let me know what state you're from. Uh, Brother Daniel from California. Uh, you from Las Vegas? I mean, uh, Los Angeles? You from Sacramento? No, I'm from Seaside. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Luke chapter 21 and verse 24. Mm. Luke 24 and 21. No, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. They say that's where it ended. 
I want to know how do you know these curses continue until today? It's very simple. It's not a trick question. Let me hear this brother right here. Use the mic. Officer Don, uh, Central Coast, California. Deuteronomy 28 and 46. Let's read that. That's the answer. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. The operative word we want is forever. And upon thy seed forever. Forever, ever, ever, forever. So we are still in the curses of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. This is why you're seeing some of our people being sold as slaves in Libya today. And people are shocked and amazed that slavery is still going on. But once you open the Bible you are no, and learn it, you are no longer shocked. You are aware that we are still under the curses of Deuteronomy 28. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 4 now. Back to Deuteronomy 4 and verse 27 once again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. And when it says we were left few in number, they, could, they killed millions of us. Over 200 million during the transatlantic slave trade died alone off the ships. Okay, we were few in number. We got to these various places, but now we have multiplied since then. Read on. And there shall ye serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone. We worship so-called Allah, we worship Caesar Borges, go ahead. Which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord now, thy God. that's what I wanted to get to, verse 29. Read it again. But if from thence the thou thence, shalt seek. The thence is the lands wherein we were scattered, which includes America, Trinidad, Tobago, uh, Jamaica, Haiti, Brazil, so forth and so on. Read it again. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God. Thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee. Stop. I want you to notice that. Highlight that. When thou art in tribulation. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee. The tribulation includes the fulfillment of Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 16. We're still under that. This is tribulation. When you know, I'm going to tell you something. When you listen to these uh, Christian commentaries, when they talk about tribulation, they always make like slavery never happened. What they do is, oh, tribulation, you won't be able to pay. Uh, you you got to get a chip in your hand. Yeah, you got to get a chip. You can't buy socks or a Snickers bar. That's not the tribulation the Bible's talking about. It's talking about slavery, oppression, colonialism, okay? And what's gonna, I'm going to show you some more what it's talking about, too, as we reawaken in these last days. Read that again. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days. That's the key. Even in the latter days. That's today. That's today. Moses was prophesying about the latter days, we being in tribulation. Go ahead. If thou turn to the Lord thy God, and shalt be obedient unto his voice. So we as a people must turn to the Lord our God and be obedient unto his voice. And his voice is the Bible. That's his voice. From there, watch this. Give me Matthew 24, verse 29. Now, we went from Moses, now we're going to Christ. Let's see if there's a distinction or anything said that is different. Moses said you're going to be in tribulation. Okay. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Shall the sun be darkened. Shall the sun be darkened. And the moon shall not give her light. Mm -hmm. And the stars shall fall from heaven. That's talking about satellites, things of that nature. That's the stars falling from heaven. Go ahead. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. When it says, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, it's making reference to war. World War Three. That's what it's talking about. But that's for another class. Go ahead. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Referring to the 12 tribes of Israel. We're going to cry. Go ahead. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So Christ is letting us know after the tribulation of those days, we're talking about our slavery, our enslavement, colonialism, things of that nature. Christ is going to make his second coming during the midst of war. That's what he's letting us know. So he's given us many clues. Watch this. Second Thessalonians chapter 1. 
Still talking about tribulation. Remember, today's class topic is tribulation, a need for leaders. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. And we're going to read verse 4 through 6. The book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 verse 6. Verse 4. Verse 4, sorry. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. So Paul was letting the people know that's in all these various churches that had been scattered. He said that uh, in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. So even during the time of Paul, he was letting the, the, the disciples in them that followed Christ, men and women, know that they would go through tribulation even during that time. So they went through it that time. Moses said, we're going to go through tribulation even in the latter times. So I want, I want to prep all of our minds, our spirits for things to come. Okay? Read on. Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God. I don't know about y'all, but I want to be counted worthy of the kingdom of God. In order for us to be counted worthy... Paul above it says, for in your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. We must endure persecutions. We must endure tribulations. That lets us know persecutions, tribulations are coming. Okay, what we've been through so far has been water off a duck's back, but it's going to increase. I'm letting y'all know now. Go ahead which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. So we suffer for the kingdom of God's sake because we're trying to end to end. You're not going to get in just because you say, oh, I believe. It ain't happening like that. Right. You got you to gotta prove you believe. What, what's the evidence of your faith? You enduring persecution. You enduring tribulation. That little group that ran out of here, a lot, remember that we had a song on Original Royalty talking about death before dishonor, remember that? Yeah. Most of them dudes in the video left soon a little persecution. Oh, I'm out, I'm running! And I'm changing the doctrine while I'm at it! Death before dishonor. You've got to be kidding. Now some of these rappers, I'll be like, oh, please. You don't believe what you're rapping about. You don't believe that what you're singing about. Now comes the persecution or tribulation. I'm out, I'm running, I'm head for the hills. What are you going to say, Lava? So low. Yeah, uh, this morning, uh, go to the word tribulation, Bishop. You're going to see underneath that thing. Okay. Go to it. Let's see. I think the only one that's still in it from that video is Officer Yuan in Vegas. Yeah. Right. Yeah, two thumbs up, uh, Officer Yuan. Two thumbs up. <laughs> and clap your hand to you, uh, for yourself. Lava said, clap your hands for yourself. <laughs> Don't, 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 don't sing it. Don't. <laughs> You're all smiling. See, I bring joy to Israel. That's all. <laughs> Cap, we need to read that for us. Tribulation, a cause of great trouble or suffering. A state of great trouble or suffering. Mm. Synonyms, trouble, worry. Anxiety, burden, cross to bear, affliction, ordeal, mm -hmm. trial, adversity, hardship, tragedy, trauma, reverse, setback, blow, difficulty, problem, issue, misfortune. What's that? Yeah, yeah. Bad, Bad luck. luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bishop, I was telling him earlier, one year we have to bury how many people? At least three, four. That was you know one I mean? year we had to bury like six. Yep, that's what I, I tell him. I think I say seven, six. But I say he didn't know. But these are the things we're going through in the time of tribulation. Now, y'all read the scripture, say trouble. But any little trouble moves you out of the way. That's what Bishop was referring to. Then you see that uh, there's a part. Where's the part right here? Miss, what's it said? Mishap. Yeah, no, no. Go to uh, affliction. You know I mean, any other affliction bring you out of shape. It's right. We have to understand, to get the kingdom, you got to go through all that. The pain, you have to go through pain. You have to go through everything. So, your guys reading the scripture, like I was telling them earlier, I said, before these things happen to us, if you go back to the class we have three months ago, it's all preparing you. 
all deacon, uh, 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 bishop on deck, deacon, captains, officer was preparing you for these things. But when that thing happened, you would think you would go back to the scripture study board and say, oh, man, they, they mentioned this. Oh, this is what happened. Then you go back to your emotion and your feeling. You know what I mean? You go back to the old man, the old woman, you think you're going to find answer on. Ah, I didn't like the way the brother did with these brothers. I don't like the way the sister did. Yeah, listen, sister. Listen. It's a time of trouble. It's a time of tribulation. It's a time of affliction. You better take your seat. Then I said earlier, I said, how the hell a brother uh, 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 trouble or a brother tribulation have to do with you? Right. If, if you're going through your tribulation, what that got to do with me? I got to pray the Lord, oh Lord, help me. I pray for this brother. Remember, your guys bail out of somebody else's tribulation. Mm -hmm. When I say with too much tribulation, we're gonna enter. That means some brothers we're gonna lose off the way. Some wife we're gonna use we're gonna lose. Some kids we're gonna lose off the way. Some husband you're gonna lose off the way. But there's much tribulation we're gonna enter to the kingdom. It's not gonna be uh, easy, it's gonna be painful, family. You're right about that. What <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Uh, I just got to, side note, I got to rant a little bit. I, back to the stupid trial over there. The, 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 the sister goes on a stand and is talking about Bishop Kanai for an hour. What Bishop Kanai visited there like maybe one time. Well, for an hour, maybe two and was out. But they, uh, crying. Then she gets up there and says, and security is set up like this, and they have the men here, and the women are here. <laughs> oh, God, Jesus. You can't make this stuff up. I'm on the phone like, this is some BS. They said the whole week had nothing to do with the sister. It was all about the layouts of IUIC, the membership, the, how many men, how many women, the ranking system. For a whole week. I said, this is, this, is, I said, this is bigger than what we are thinking it is. Evil is in the midst. I'm telling you. And it's starting over there in the UK. <laughs> but I don't know. This stuff like that, it, it, it give me the word. It, uh, it fuels me. I tell you, I don't, it don't make me want to head for the, uh, for the hills. I'm not made like that. I said, you know, we're going to push harder and harder just for that. The evil. Oh, God. I'm sorry for my rant. Y'all can excuse me, please. Where are we at? We have verse 6. We have verse 6. Where? Uh, Second, Th Second Thessalonians chapter 1. Yes, go ahead. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Yeah, well, yes, 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 Lord. See, this is what I read about. When I hear it, when, I, when people do evil, I sit back and I meditate on this. Read it again for all of us. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. I want you to see, y'all don't understand, some of y'all don't understand the character, the nature of the Most High God. It says, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense, meaning to pay back tribulation to them that trouble you. Meaning you, tr you trouble the servants of God, it's a righteous thing for the Lord to pay you back. Y'all understand that? That cheers me up. That makes my teeth white. I love that thing. I say, yes, get them, Lord. Get them. Come on. And to you who are troubled. Oh, no, that was it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, read that, read that, read that. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. So the same message Paul gave our people in Thessalonica is the same message we give to our people today. To you who are troubled, come into this truth and rest with us. Be comforted in this truth. Go ahead. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Some, some of these people that left this truth, they don't obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. They don't obey the gospel. Go to your brother one-on-one. -on -one. They don't give a daggone about that. They're busy doing secret recordings, putting on. I'm like, that's not what the scriptures say to do. But there's some of you, oh, what there? he's my friend. He ain't my friend. You don't obey the gospel of Christ. You are no friend of God, and you're no friend of mine. I hope you all have the same understanding. Shoot. Wipe your eyebrow. You got something up there. Yeah, yeah, you imagine that Judas Iscariot, you, you, uh, after he sold Christ out, you imagine we said, nah, I know he sold Christ out, but he's still my friend. Yeah, an idiot would say that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Th that's what you're saying. Th then you notice among the blacks and the Spanish, that's the only people who don't give a damn about their own people. Right. That I mean that they're sitting there talking about your leadership. You're going to go to them talking about this, my friend. He didn't try. Listen, when you went for the leadership, you went for the whole congregation. Mm. You understand? You have to start thinking like that, man. Because your mind is not right with the Lord. 
That means that that brother go against your country, he go against you, against your children, he go against everything you stand for. You understand? We have to have the mindset, man. Then we're the only people who don't think like that. Right. The Chinese, look what happened when, when, when what happened to the, you remember the, uh, inside the airplane? Yeah, when they yeah. beat him up and yeah, dragged him off the plane. Yeah. Then the Chinese people said, the hell with your uh, airline. We're not going to travel until you apologize. Mm -hmm. Everybody come and apologize. But us, now we sit there. You remember what happened to the lady when, when uh, the Chinese uh, uh, store, when they did the evil to the sister. You remember yeah, that they were yeah. trying to close that store to the sister. I need me my fake weed. I need me this. I need me that. You know, we have to, our mindset is so crazy, man. That nation looking at us and say, whoa, look at the most elite nation in the planet Earth. Look what they become. Look what we become. We become joke to this nation, man. We become so much joke that looking at, laughing at us. But listen, the scripture said, listen, you go for the leader, you go for them all. That's the mindset we're going to have to have, man, and, and, and live with it. Go to Revelation chapter 7 and verse 4. This is a time for leaders, a time for leaders in these desperate and dire times. Revelation 7 and 4. No, I want 7 and 14. That's what I want. The book of Revelation, chapter 7 and verse 14. Start at, let me look at it. Start at verse 13. Verse 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me. Listen good. What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? Listen good. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. So this is the same thing Moses prophesied about. This is the same thing Christ spoke about in Matthew 24. The Israelites going into tribulation. Then here in Revelation 7, it talks about those that were delivered. Those that had escaped the desperate times, the dire times, the times of tribulation. Everybody understand that? Yes, so read it again, verse 14, please. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes. And made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So the tribulation is not talking about, oh, you're going to be running through the streets of America with a chip in your hand. Ah! It ain't talking about that. Or everybody, somebody's flying on the plane, they disappear in the rapture, the plane crashes. Then you got seven years of tribulation. That's malarkey. That's garbage. That's not what the Bible's talking about. Seven years of tribulation. It's talking about from the time of our destruction all the way up to today. Tribulation. We cannot allow these nations to remove us from our own book. That's what they're trying to do. This book was written by our ancestors for us today through the inspiration of the Most High God. Everybody understand that? He left us a handbook. He said, here's your handbook. You follow this, you're going to be all right. Okay? From there, give me First Maccabees. So tribulation upon our people from slavery to our awakening to the destruction to come. So write that down, write that down. Tribulation upon our people from slavery to our awakening, which is now, to the destruction to come. I'm talking about World War III, second coming of Christ. There's going to be tribulation. We're still in it. Examples of our past will reveal itself, will reveal what is to come. I want you to understand that. Examples of our past will reveal what is to come. And what I mean by that, if we read the scriptures, it gives a blueprint of things that occurred in the past, and it shows us things to occur in the future. Some may be more, some may be less, but the Lord has, le has left us this, this um, guidebook, this Bible as we call it, for us today. Watch this, 1 Maccabees chapter 1, start at verse 41. I'm going to show you what occurred in the Greek captivity occurred in 1776. The book of first well, Maccabees. Actually, a little later after that, during I'll, I'll throw it in there. I'm going to say uh, 1865. I'll start around there. Go ahead. The book of First Maccabees, chapter 1 and verse 41. Listen good. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. So just like the Greeks did, so did America do. And during the time of the early 17, late 1700s, early 1800s. Go ahead. And everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. I want you to think about the, the inception of America. They said all should be one people. You had the Irish come. You had the Chinese come. You had the East Indians come. 
okay? And they brought us by force over here. But they said all should be one people. It's the same thing. Nothing has changed. Go ahead. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. So listen good. So now that we're here, we came here in America, and we had the northern kingdom here, many of our people consented to the religions of democracy. So another word for democracy is Christianity. All being one people. Democracy says we're all one. Christianity says the same thing. We're all one. That's the same doctrine. Watch this. Read on. And sacrificed unto idols mm -hmm. and profaned the Sabbath. Now, the sacrificing we did unto idols, Christmas, that's a sacrifice to idols. Thanksgiving, that's another sacrifice unto idols. You know your mama made the turkey or the pork or the whatever she made. All the family get together at a big table, thank white Jesus, eat. We eat till we full. You know, we just love sitting around and talking about family time. That's a sacrifice. Okay, read it again. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. The Christmas tree is an idol. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem. Now, notice what it said and profane the Sabbath. Because under Christmas, under Easter, they teach us to profane the seventh-day Sabbath. And the Sabbaths that follow after that in general, they say, no, no, don't celebrate that. Celebrate Sunday. Celebrate these days. That's the profanation of the Sabbath. Go ahead. And the city of Judah, that they should follow the strange laws of the land. So from the time of our enslavement, or I'll say what they call our emancipation, we were made to follow the strange laws of this land as well. What I'm showing you is that our history shows us a shadow of things occurring in these last days. Go ahead. And forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple, and that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days, Come on. and pollute the sanctuary and holy people, set up altars and groves and chapels of idols, and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts. Y'all know during Thanksgiving or, or Christmas we sacrificed swine's flesh. Sundays we went to church sacrificing swine's flesh. Oh, pig, the chitlins. We say chitlins, they say chitterlings. I don't know where that word came from. I'm like, chitterlings, what's that? We said chitlins. <laughs> Go ahead. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. To the end, they Now, this is the reason that, Amer that the Greeks, as well as America, want us to follow the strange laws of the land, that we should all be one people. Here's the reason, verse 49. To the end, they might forget the law. That we might forget God's law. And change all the ordinances. And change all the ordinances written in the Bible. Go ahead. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. So under the Greeks, they were putting us to death. And believe it or not, when we didn't worship white Jesus, they were slaughtering us as well. From there, give me, go to the Apocrypha. Go to Esther in the Apocrypha. So again, I don't want y'all to forget why I'm going to these scriptures now. I'm giving us a look into the past and showing us how it will, is a reflection for today. Okay, so we're going to Esther, chapter 13. And we're going to start at verse 3. The book of Esther. Wait, 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 wait. Let me find it because that book is hard to find for me. I can never find that one. Good thing ain't nobody call it on the street. I'd be like, hold on, give me a table of contents. Right after Judith, thank you. All right. All right, so we're in Esther chapter 13, and we're going to start at verse 3. Now, I want you all to pay close attention. Now, what I'm going to show you now is that just as in the past, during the, this is during the Persian captivity, something was transpiring regarding the Israelites. We waking up now. We are, are we waking up now, brothers and sisters? Yes, we waking up now. Watch this. Watch what happened during the time of Esther. Go ahead. The book of Esther, chapter 13, verse 3. Now, when I asked my counselors how this might be brought to pass, Amon, that excelled in wisdom among us. Amon is Haman that you read about in the regular book of Esther. Amon, Amon is Haman, Haman. the Edomite, Amalekite. Go ahead. Right. 
Amen, that excelled in wisdom among us and was approved for his constant goodwill and steadfast fidelity and had honor of the second place in the kingdom. Declared unto us that in all nations throughout the world there was scattered a certain malicious people. There was scattered a certain malicious people. Go ahead. That had laws contrary to all nations. They said this race has laws contrary to all nations, meaning the Bible that they got is contrary to all nations. Go ahead. And continually despised the commandments of kings. And, it, and their laws despised the commandments of kings. Why? For example, I'm going to tell you why. In America, the commandment of the king here is accept same-sex marriage. Right. Is God's law for that? No. So we say, no, that's against God's law. Okay, they'll say, um, give me some more. A child can uh, divorce their parents. So what's the word? Is it emancipate? Emancipate. emancipate from their parents. That's against God's laws. Okay, there's so abortion. Oh, you have the right woman has the right pro life or whatever they call it. All madness, straight up madness. Women can dress like men. Men can dress like women. So now read it again. Declared unto us that in all nations throughout the world there was scattered a certain malicious people that had laws contrary to all nations and continually despised the commandments of kings. So as the uniting of our kingdoms honorably intended by us cannot go forward. Because Haman was trying to unite uh, Greece and Persia. So he said it's hard for us to unite with these people and that book they got what we call today the Bible. Why? Like, for example, Deuteronomy 32, 8, it says, for uh, uh, God separated or divided the sons of Adam. I'm familiar with that, right? Mm -hmm. He separated the nations. We teach that. The nations are not to be together. See? See, what they're, see that stuff they're teaching? It's hatred. It's hatred. Read on. Seeing then, we understand that this people alone is continually in opposition unto all men. See that? It says this people alone is continually in opposition unto all men. Go ahead. Differing in the strange manner of their laws. Because of their strange laws. And evil affected to our state. And now these people are evil affected to our state. Working all the mischief they can. That our kingdom may not be firmly established. So that you see what they're saying about the Israelites? And this is during the time of Persia. Read on. Therefore have we commanded that all they that are signified in writing unto you by Amen, which is ordained over the affairs and is next unto us, shall all with their wives and children be utterly destroyed by the sword of their enemies. Mm. Without all mercy and pity, the 14th day of the 12th month, Adar of this present year. That, Go ahead. That they who of old and now also are malicious may in one day with violence go into the grave. And so ever and so ever hereafter cause cause our affairs to be well settled and without trouble. So there's a plot to destroy the Israelites. Why? Because of the Bible, the book that we live by. OK, now remember, we were in the Persian captivity at this time. We were still trying to get ourselves right. Haman the Edomite, who was an Amalekite, said, no, let's kill them. Yeah. That's where the history of the uh, holiday of Purim originates. True. It's a deliverance from oppression. Now watch this. Let's get some more. It ain't over. First Maccabees 7. So I'm giving you a glimpse into the past, which is a reflection for us today. Go ahead. First Maccabees 7, and let's start at verse 5. Watch okay. this. The book of First Maccabees, chapter 7 and verse 5. There came unto him all the wicked and ungodly men of Israel. See that? There came unto him all the wicked and ungodly men of Israel. Go ahead. Having Alcimus, who was desirous to be high priest for their captain. And they accused the people to the king, saying, Judah and his brethren have slain all thy friends and driven us out of our own land. Now therefore send some man, send some man whom thou trustest, and let him go and see what havoc he hath made amongst us, and in the king's land, and let him punish them with all of them that aid him. These are Israelites that went to the Greeks. They went to the Greeks to destroy the Israelites that stood for the laws of the Most High God. This is the same thing we're going through today. You would be shocked if you saw the amount of Israelites that went on a stand in London testifying against the strange, and these were men and women that were once with us, how all oh, they're, they're, they're evil with that Bible. They're evil 
crying to the white man, help us. You've got to be. I, I can believe what I'm hearing. I know I'm going on a rant again. I'm sorry. Good. Then it's the king good. chose Bacchides. Oh, sorry. No, it's good stuff, Bishop. It's, not, okay. it's good stuff. <laughs> so, from there, go back up to verse 5. Verse 5. There came unto him all the wicked and ungodly men of Israel. That's those men and women, for example, that ran up out of here. I'm, I'm giving you a glimpse to the things that happened in the past that I'm letting you know is happening today. So those of you that's on faith, oh, you're still my friend. You're an idiot. You are an idiot. Whether you're male or female, you, these people are testifying against the laws of God. Testifying against the men and women that stand for the laws of God. And they're all on Facebook, running their mouth. Oh, I don't wear purple anymore. Oh, why? Because I serve Christ. You serve the devil. That's who you're serving. Okay, from there. Give me Acts chapter 4 and verse 25. The book of Acts chapter 4 and verse 25. Who by the mouth of thy servant David had said, why did the heathen rage? Why? This is, he's quoting or paraphrasing Psalms, the second chapter. Go ahead. And the people imagined of vain things. The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. Now, we read this, that uh, psalm many times, but now he's going to explain it to us. Peter's going to explain it to us. Go ahead. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles. So this is the heathen. Why do the heathen raise both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles? Go ahead. And the people of Israel. Remember it said, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? He's letting you know the people are the Israelites that joined with, this is Rome at this time under Acts. Peter's breaking it down for us. He said, what David prophesied in Psalms 2 is taking place here under Rome in Acts, the fourth chapter. It's guess what? It's taking place here today in Europe and America. Read it again. Verse 27. For a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determine before to be done. You know done. what? These people can't do nothing against us except what the Lord allows them to do. Go ahead. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. Behold their threatenings. Remember the idiot, that stupid little uh, fat, bald-headed boy that left up out of here sent Deacon Malachi a message. Oh, you're going to be destroyed. We're destroying you. Ha, ha, ha. And then turn around and say, I serve Christ. <laughs> You little conquistador. Read that again. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. And this is what we ask the Lord to grant us with all boldness we may speak his holy words. Go ahead. By stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy and child Jesus. During this time there were signs and wonders. We're going to touch on the signs and wonders later on in today's lesson. From there. Give me first Mac, I mean first Esdras chapter five. Going back to Persia now. First Esdras chapter five. The book of First Esdras, chapter five. This is after Cyrus had made the decree for the Israelites to be released from captivity and to return to Jerusalem and build the temple. Watch what happened. What verse you want, Bishop? Uh, verse uh, seventy two. All right. Book of Ezra, chapter 5, and verse 72. And I want all y'all to reflect back. I'm sh as, again, I'm going back in history to show you what's happening today and will continue to happen at different intervals in this truth. Go ahead. But the heathen of the land, lying heavy upon inhabitants of Judah, Judea, and holding them straight, hindered their building. And by their secret plots and, and popular by their persuasion. What? Read it this again. And by their secret plots. And by their secret plots. Secret plots. Again, I got to rant again. You have a trial about a sister who is missing. The entire week has nothing to do with her. It's about IUIC. How they started. Who the leadership are. How many men do they have? How many women do they have? Where is security located? 
This has not, oh, I'm sorry. Go back. Read it again. <laughs> and by their secret plots and popular persuasions. And popular persuasion. What do they want to do? Put it all on the media. Put it all on the media. Captain Isaac and O'Shea, they said every time they walk out the courtroom, the cameras is like this all in their face. And uh, the, they got the black woman always, she's always the pit bull for the white man. Just like, uh, remember the woman, the black woman that, for the Tuskegee experiments? They look for them. And it, you ain't got to look too far. She goes, whether you say anything to us or not, we're going to put you all on BBC. BBC airs throughout Africa. It goes through China. It goes throughout America. So what? They're going to put all manner of lies out there. Mm -hmm. They're abusive to women. They hate people. They're against the uniting of all nations. They're this. They're that. So what? Read it again. Uh, Zakai verse 72. But the heathen of the land, lying heavy upon the inhabitants of Judea, and holding them straight, hindered their building. And by their secret plots and popular persuasions and commotions, they hindered the finishing of the building. See that? They hindered the finishing of the building of the temple. Today, we're building the nation of Israel, a spiritual house right now. So they're trying to hinder that. Okay? Was that you read down to 73? I'm in 73 now. Give me a... Uh, Give me the article about Nero now. Pull that up. I'm going to show you all what happened during Rome's time. So, again, we jump from Persia. I'm going back to Rome. All right, Zakai, you can see this? Yes. All right. Nero Caesar and the Christian faith. Now, Nero came after uh, Claudius. Go ahead. One of the most despicable manifestations of human flesh ever to disgrace this planet was Nero Claudius Caesar. Born in A.D. 37, Nero was educated at the feet of philosopher Seneca, whom he eventually forced to commit suicide. Now, Paul uh, stood before Nero when you read in some of his letters. He's not mentioned by name, though. Go ahead. In a oh, sorry. Born in A.D. 37, Nero was educated at the feet of philosopher Seneca, whom he eventually forced to commit suicide. Nero murdered his way to the imperial throne, which he occupied from A.D. 54 to 68. His life was characterized by debauchery, violence. He caused his own mother to be killed. Damn! And ex extravagance. In A.D. 64, a terrible fire broke out in Rome. Now, I want y'all to listen to this real good. It was strongly believed that Nero deliberately torched the city in order to justify building a more splendid one. At any rate, the, con the conflagration... The, the conflag... Conflagration. Oh, conflagration? Oh, conflagration raged out of control for more than a week. So the Subst fire went for longer than a week. Substantially destroying about 70% of the area. As a consequence of this tragedy and the widespread belief in Nero's complicity, the emperor became the brunt of intense criticism. So everybody knew what Nero did. A lot of people did, but watch what Nero did to throw the heat off himself. The ruler seized upon a plan. Listen good. Now remember we talked about secret plots. Watch. Due to the fact that Roman settlement... Sentiment. Sentiment was hostile toward Christianity. They were hostile. Rome was already mad about the Christians that followed Christ. The emperor would blame the followers of Jesus for this crime. Thus did he. And in AD 64, a fierce persecution was lost, launched against the saints in Rome. See that? This mm. is what happened. The man co concocted a lie and said the followers of Christ are the ones that burned 70% of the city. And they all went into rage against the Israelites that followed Christ. A secret plot, okay? I, read on. Let me see if there was more. We do not know for certain how or when the cause of Christ was planted in Rome. Apparently, it was not the result of apostolic mission efforts. It could be that some from Rome converted on the day of Pentecost, migrated back to their home city, and established the church right, there. You read about that in Acts, the second chapter. I think that was it. That's okay. all I wanted out of there. Thank you. So from there, watch this. You got something? Go ahead. I'm at the bottom of, at the bottom of some Bibles that has um, at the end of 2 Timothy. This is when Paul wrote that he finished his course. He was going to be killed by, by Nero. It says in my Bible, it says the second epistle unto Timothy, unto Timoth Timoth Timotheus. Where you at? 2 um, Timothy, the very bottom. At the bottom, as you have it in your Bible too. Right under the last verse, where he says, The Lord Jesus Christ be with my spirit. This is the second epistle unto Timotheus. Ordained the first bishop. So at this point, this is years later because Timothy's older now. They ordained the first bishop of the church of the, of the Ephesians was written from Rome, 
when Paul was brought before Nero the second time. That second time he was beheaded. That second time. And he also killed Peter and his wife also. So that lets you know. That's why Paul said, I finished my course. It was right this second time. He said, he's going to kill me. The first time he let him go, second time he killed him. During that time right there. Okay. All right. Let's go to Acts chapter 8 now and verse 1. Again, I'm giving us a glimpse in history to show us what is to come. The book of Acts, chapter 8, and verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church. Now, we read about the persecution under Nero, which was way later. But now showing you the persecution already was before Nero. Read that again. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. So they were all scattered except the apostles. The apostles hung tight together. Now, the ones that scattered, they didn't give up. Because you read, when you read further down, you read about Stephen traveling and teaching. That's what they were all doing. That's how the gospel got spread further. It was all the Lord's hand. But my point is this. Persecutions will come. This is why it is paramount that you men and women study, study, study. Because the, 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 what they want to do is have, the, uh, have us destroyed and this gospel gets swept under the rug. And we all go back to white man Jesus, Christmas, pig, chitlins. That is their hope, okay? From there, give me chapter 12 and verse 1. The book of Acts, chapter 12, and verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Now this is way after chapter 8 and verse 1. This is years, years later. So now Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Go ahead. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. He killed James, the brother of John. This is the sons of Zebedee. Go ahead. And because he saw it pleased the Jews. Notice what it says. And because he saw it pleased the Jews. These Jews are similar to the ones we read about in Maccabees that, that ran to Greece and said, what did they say? It said there were certain wicked. Who knows what it said? Who remembers? We read it in Maccabees. Hold that, Zakai. Go back to um, 1 Maccabees 7 and 5. I, don't want to, I just want to read that so we see how it's so similar. So, so, so similar. The book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 7, and verse, five. and verse 5. There came unto him also the wicked and ungodly men of Israel. That's what I wanted right there. So now let's go right back to Acts 12 and verse 3. The book of Acts, chapter 12 and verse 3. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. So this was the high holiday of Passover. So you had Jews rejoicing when they killed James, rejoicing when they arrested Peter, okay? Some of them at one time followed Paul and them, followed Christ. And he ran and, he ran and joined union with Rome against them, okay? It's the same thing that happened during the time of the Greeks. And guess what, brothers and sisters? It's the same thing happening today, okay, from there. Let's, we read down to verse 5? No. Go ahead. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to the four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now, you got people that say, oh, can't they repent? Listen, did Judas Iscariot repent? No. No. Where in the Bible do you read people, someone that betrayed Christ, like when, remember Paul, Hymenaeus, and Alexander? Paul delivered them to Satan. Where's the scripture that said they repented? Hold that. Give me, let me show you something. Hebrews, I know some of y'all don't believe the Bible anyway. Get Hebrews 6 and 4. Hebrews 6 and 4. Some of you just don't believe. You, st you still, you say you believe you're an Israelite. You say you believe Christ, but white man Jesus is right in the back of your head going, you don't really believe that, do you? The book of Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost 
and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance. So what Bible are y'all reading? What Bible are y'all reading? You're stuck on Christianity. Oh, they can repent. Hebrews 6 and 4 is about men and women who learned this gospel, walked in this truth, and then said, you know what? To hell with that. Then they went and joined with the enemies of God. This ain't talking about the man or woman who sinned and stumbling in sin, like an adulterer or fornicator, even a thief or a liar or something like that. This Hebrews 6 and 4 is somebody who does a whole, is it 180? Is that the term? Yes. A whole 180 and goes against the gospel. These people that was with us, they are against the gospel of Christ. Y'all what don't you understand? They're testifying in Europe to destroy this gospel. There's no repentance for that. There's none. Wipe your eyes, dry your tears. There's no repentance for that. That is different than a man or woman in the midst of adultery that we put out temporarily. Everybody understand that? All right. What did you say, Ethan? That they're doomed. That's what I was going to say. Doomed. Yes, they are doomed. They are doomed. I like that word, doomed. So, where are we at, uh, uh, Captain Zakai? Uh, we're at Hebrews 6 and 6. You want to finish? Or? What verse? Uh, no, no, verse go back six. to Acts 12. I'm sorry. Okay. The book of Acts, chapter 12 and verse 6. No, that was it. That was it. Give Revelation 2 and 8. Let me show you a little bit more about tribulation. Now, remember, John the Revelator wrote this to the seven churches. The seven churches, the, the, he said, write these to the seven angels over the seven churches. The seven angels are the seven bishops over the churches, okay? Watch this. Revelation chapter 2. Let's start at verse 8. Okay. The book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 8. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation. Notice what he said. I know your works and tribulation. Smyrna was in the midst of tribulation. Go ahead. And poverty. But thou art rich. Because all the promises in the Bible pertain to our people. Go ahead. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Go ahead. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold. Notice what it says. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. John was prophesying to them saying, listen, the congregation of Smyrna, y'all are going to suffer. But don't be afraid. Go ahead. Behold, the devil shall come cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. What? And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. Be thou fa mm. faithful unto death. I'm sorry, I'm typing something. Oh, God, people just annoy me. <laughs> Go ahead. Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. See that? Be thou faithful unto death. He's letting them know the church of Smyrna, some of y'all are going to die. But be faithful unto death. Go ahead. He that hath an ear, let him hear. What verse you at? Verse 11. Go ahead. He that hath an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit saith unto the churches, he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. He said, if you overcome, you won't be hurt of the second death, which is that final judgment we read about in Revelation 20. We went over that in class a few months back, okay? So if you don't know, y'all find the video, you look it up. That's the final judgment that's given to all people except those that make the first resurrection. So what I want y'all to see is that the church of Smyrna went through tribulation. He said, the devil shall... Now, read verse 10 again because I, I, I wasn't really paying attention. Read 10 again. Verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold. The devil shall cast some of you into prison. Some of the people in Smyrna was cast into prison, okay? So right now, right, listen good, right now, the U.K., our church in the U.K., we have two. They're going through tribulation. One of the members is cast into prison. We asking for what's the evidence. We're not standing on the side of wickedness. We're not standing on the side of unrighteousness. We stand on the side of righteousness. What is the evidence? So far, none has come out. And the whole thing is, I always see you're wicked, you're wicked, you're wicked. Men and women, you're all evil. So it says, fear none of the things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Now, I want to pause there. <laughs> this is not the spiritual demon flying around, putting people in a spiritual jail. This was Rome! 
throwing people in prison. He's calling the Romans, the white man, the devil. So if you want another verse of proof, says the white man's the devil, there it is right there. Oh, oh I'm confused. Because you're stuck on white man Jesus, that's why. Read that again, verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. That you may be tried. There's a purpose behind you going into prison, some of you. That you may be tried. Go ahead. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. And ten days you're going to be, suffer great persecution. Go ahead. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown And of he life. lets them know. He said, y'all going to die, but be faithful unto death. Go ahead. And I'm going to give you a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that hath an ear means he that understands. Understand then. Go ahead. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. You ain't got to worry about that final judgment. Okay, from there, from there, from there. Let's go to Psalms 50. I want to take a look, a brief look at another prophecy. Because again, again, while we sat in Sunday school, we sang them little stupid gospel songs, those hymns. Go to Sunday school in the morning. Go to Sunday school. <laughs> oh, please. I just want to vomit. School. And it was all good, and we were just so happy. But when you read the Bible, you find out that in this great awakening, there's going to be tribulation, even upon the saints that wake up. Psalms 50 and 21, please. The book of Psalms, chapter 50 and verse 21. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Though thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself. So because the Lord did not bring swift judgment upon the wicked nations that destroyed us, the nations, mainly Edom, thought that God was like them. They felt comfortable saying God is white. They felt comfortable painting images of a European Jesus and a European God, European angels, and European Israelites. They felt very comfortable. Go ahead. But. I will reprove thee. God said, I'm going to reprove you. I'm going to correct you. Go ahead. And set them in order before thine eyes. Hence we are today. And set them in order before your eyes. This is what the nations are seeing taking place. And do you think there's not going to be pushback? Understand this. During the time of Persia, when they were rebuilding the temple, the nation said, no, never let the Israelites come back together. They're going to conquer the world. Stop them. That happened in, under Persia. It happened during the time of Greeks' captivity and the time of Rome. Now, here we are in America. They made us, they, they changed us from Israelites to Negroes and Latinos. They changed us. Now we're waking up. Read that again and set them. Come on, Sorry. read it again. But I will reprove thee mm -hmm. and set them in order before thine eyes. Now the Lord's waking us up. And he's not waking us up. Uh, in a mindset of um, just rabble-rousing, running around, uh, 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 doing anything we want. He says, no, there, in the awakening of my people, there must be order. They must be ordered. Okay, everybody understand that? Because you got these uh, Israelite camps, and they, they, they don't understand that, the word order. I do whatever I want to do. I, well, don't join no camp. Camps are evil. No, no, no. God said, I'm going to set them in order. There must be order. Remember the scripture in Corinthians says, for God is not the author of confusion. Okay? So the Lord said he's going to set them in order before they are. So we're being set in order, and the nations are watching. See, that's the purpose of YouTube. That's the purpose of Facebook. A lot of y'all think that the nations just love us, our people, so much. No, it's to keep an eye on us, to see how far the gospel has grown, to see how far the truth has grown. That's the purpose of Facebook, because they know black people like to talk. This is how they, under, they know what's going on in Austin camp. Okay, they say, oh, look what happened over there. They put that video. Look, look. See, they say, oh, don't mind. You so good. Don't mind, niggas. You ain't got to do too much. Just sit back. They're going to destroy themselves. That's the purpose of Facebook. You know women can't stay on Facebook. I don't check Facebook. I check the Lord's book. Understand that. Oh, you men the same way? No, y'all be on Facebook. You be on Facebook. You be on Facebook. Hey, highlight that. I don't check Facebook. I check the Lord's book. I like that. That sounds like a T-shirt. 
Oh, man. Hey, let me show y'all this thing here. I'm sorry. I just, I, hey, I'm going to send y'all a, a picture. I'm going to send y'all a picture. Officer uh, Uriel sent this to us today. He showed me this. Now, with all the hate we get, with all the hate we get, I'm going to show y'all something. Just watch. Y'all going to laugh. Watch this. Everybody want to ride our coattails. But that's all right. I'm not hating. Hey, put, put this picture up on the screen. I'm going to show you how some of these people do. They say, oh, don't join no camp. IUIC is evil, right? Yeah, okay. Watch what this one particular camp done did. Do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? Do you see this, Lava? Do, do, do you see this? What, what's, what's going on here? What's going on here? I'm like, huh? <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. I'm like, wow. The Israelites, huh? Okay. They got the same layout and everything. Wow. Hey, uh, Uriel, where's the garment they, they made? You was Uriel. Let me see. Oh, I got it. No, here you go. I got it. I got it. Let me show you all when they hit the street. Watch this. Just watch. You can't make this stuff up. The plot thickens. IUIC is the devil. They are, they are wicked as hell. I right, put this picture up. Do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? I'm like, wow. I'm like, uh, are you, you can't get no more blatant, blatant than this. You're right, it ain't subtle. It's like, <laughs> They picked the Israelites because that's the tag in all our YouTube stuff. Yep. We always started with the Israelites. So now they're trying to pull that, that juice off of YouTube. Damn. Uh, yeah, uh, you think about it. Every color they have in the book, bro, they got all these colors. All you can come up with is this. That means you do it out of deceit. You're trying to deceit the IUIC members to watch you. I mean, that's all this whole thing is all about. But we evil, though. Yeah, we, we evil. evil. All right, brother. I mean, just, hey, brothers, just come join us then. Just come repent and come join us. It's not like we're going to say, no, just come on. You know? From there, where did we just read, Zakai? Uh, Psalms 50 and 21. All right, give me Revelation 12 and 15. Let me, let me show you all this. You want 12 and 15? Yes, please. The book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 15. Now. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. Now, some of you may be new. You may not know who the serpent is. Jump over to verse, uh, read verse 1 to 3. And I'm, a, I'm just going to go through it somewhat quickly. Write down the notes. Go ahead. Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. So the first question is, who is the woman? Get Jeremiah 6, verse 2. Write this down. Jeremiah 6, verse 2 explains who the woman is. Precept must be upon precept. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 6, and verse 2. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. So the Lord compares the nation of Israel as a comely and delicate woman, a beautiful woman. So when we go back to Revelation 12 and 1, read it again quickly. The book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman. A clothed, woman. Clothed a with so the, the sun, woman is Israel. Clothed with what? The sun and the moon. Under her feet, and upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. So the question is, what is the sun and the moon rec making reference to? The sun and the moon are two forms of great light. When you read Genesis 1.14, it says he made the greater light to serve the day and the lesser light to serve the night. 
Here's a precept, Proverbs 6, verse 23. For light, what is this light that the woman was clothed with and was under her feet? The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, and verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. The law is what? Light. Light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So when we go back to Revelation 12, again in one, read it quickly. The book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And that's more evidence that this represents the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what the 12 stars represent. The sun and the moon represent the law, which is as light. And the woman represents Israel. Everybody with me so far? Read on. And she, being with child, cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. She was about to give birth to a child. Go ahead. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon. A great red dragon. Watch this red. It goes back to Genesis 25, 25. Get that for us real quick, Zakai. That's why you, the churches teach us not to read the Old Testament. Let me tell you something. Without the Old Testament, you will not understand the New Testament. <coughs> Go ahead. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 25. And the first came out red. What color? Red. What color? Red. Go ahead. All over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. Esau. Go back to Revelation 12 and 3 once again. The book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. Now you may ask yourself, why does it say dragon? Give me that in Job 30, verse 29. It's a metaphor. It is a metaphor. It is not Godzilla. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. Job chapter 30 and verse 29. I am a brother to dragons. Job said what? I am a brother to dragons. Job said I am a brother to dragons. Okay, meaning wicked men. So go back to Revelation 12. The book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 3. 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads. So out of Edom, which is Esau, he had seven heads, which means seven major empires. Who knows them? Let's get this brother right here. Do not start with Russia, please. Hey, Shalom, Bishop. No sign of Christ's blessing. Give me your name again. Uh, Officer Rafai from the Sacramento camp. Okay. Uh, Greece, Rome, Spain, France, Germany, Russia, and Great Britain. R read it again slow because people are writing. Greece. Greece is the first one. Go ahead. Rome. Rome was number two. Spain. Spain, number three. France. France was number four. Germany. Germany was number five. Russia. Russia was number six. Great Britain. And Great Britain was number seven. Write that down. Write that down. Read on Zakai. Thank you. And ten horns, seven horns, seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the wait, third. Wait, 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 wait. You, you messed sorry. me up in three. I'm sorry. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads. And ten horns. The ten horns. What's that? The ten horns. Okay, this brother right here with his hand up. Look alive, y'all. Come on. Put your hand back up. The ten horns. What is the ten horns? Shalom, leadership. Shalom, Bishop. Soldier Malachi, Seattle Camp. Okay. Uh, the European Union, NATO, and the ten common markets. Ten common markets. Very good. That's, uh, yes, the EU. European Union. Very good. All right. So now, that's who the great red dragon is, Esau, and there's seven great empires followed by the European common market. All right. Jump back over to Revelation 12. We were in verse 15. 15. Revelation 12 and verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth. The serpent is the dragon with seven heads and ten horns. And the serpent cast out of his mouth. What? What do you do with your mouth? You do what? It starts with a C. Huh? Communicate. Communicate. What is the white man's mouth? How does he communicate? The media. His media. That in includes TV. That includes the Internet. That includes his newspapers, his radios. He controlled. That is his mouth. 
So read that again. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. So now, watch this. Carried away of the flood. Give me Hebrews 13 and 9 to understand what being carried away of the flood represents. Hebrews 13 and 9. Hebrews 13 and 9. What does it mean that out of their media, out of their mouth, came a flood to cause the Israelites to be carried away? The book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 9. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. You see that? Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. I'm going to give you an example. Remember on YouTube last year, uh, Edomite put up some videos that said the world is flat. You know a, whole, a chunk of Israelites from the other camps all left the truth. Just fell out and said the world is flat. we are giving up this Bible because the white man put it out there. Unbelievable. Then they put up, uh, what's that thing on the Discovery Channel? What's that cloth? The, the Shroud of Turin. Oh, look, there's evidence. Jesus is white. You niggas is lying saying he's black. I'm leaving. You can't make this stuff up. You know that was Northern Kingdom, right? Oh, man. <laughs> Let's go back. Let's go back. Revelation 12 and 16. The book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 16. So out of the white man's media, he puts out lie upon lie so that the Israelites will be carried away with his lies. Go ahead. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth helped us. When it says the earth is going into this, remember Christ said, upon this uh, rock. Rock. I will build my church. So he's talking about himself. This is Christ right here. This is, this is what helps us. This is the earth that's helping us. Read that again. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out this of his This Bible mouth. is what swallows up every lie that comes out the media. This book swallows up every lie. Go ahead. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. Here's the point. And the dragon, the European Union, the white man was angry with the Israelites. Go ahead. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. So if you don't know what time this is, brothers and sisters, you sleep. You're in wartime. It says, and went to make what? And went to, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus How Christ. How are they making war? Hold that, Zakai. Get first Ezra again, chapter 5, verse 73. Because I know they forgot already. How are they making war? They're not shooting us in the streets. Not yet. No, not yet. That ain't coming yet. But watch this. Here's the war. The book of 1 Ezra, chapter 5, and verse 73. And by their secret plots. And, and by their secret plots. And popular persuasions. And popular persuasions. That's war. That's war. Get the public against them. That's what Nero did. Nero said, there's a fire burned up 70% of the city. Blame the followers of Christ. Blame them. And when you read, remember what they did? They burned our bodies alive in the arenas, like Roman candles. They, they put animal hides on some of us and let lions and tigers and bears attack us in the Roman arenas. Y'all better check that history out. All because of a, uh, a, a secret plot and popular persuasion to destroy them. Something for the troops coming out of the earth and swallowing the flood. It's Psalms 85 and 11. And it says, um, I got it. The earth helped the woman. This is right the here. The book of Psalms, chapter 85, in verse 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. So when we go out in the streets and we teach, we're swallowing that flood. The, the, word, the, the truth that swallows the flood. When we go out there and teach the word of God, that's what we're doing. All right? All oh, praises. Uh, let's go back now. We are back in, give me Isaiah 59. So the earth helped the woman. This Bible is swallowing up all the lies, okay? Now watch this. Isaiah 59 and verse 19. The book of Isaiah, chapter 59 and verse 19. Remember we read, John said, and the dragon casts, what did it say? Cast, uh a flood out of his mouth, right? Is that what it said? I'm not looking at it. Now watch what it says here, Isaiah 59 and 19. Come on. 
So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west. Where are we? The western hemisphere. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west. Go ahead. And his glory from the rising of the sun. Mm -hmm, which is the east. When the enemy shall come in like a flood. So when the enemy shall come in like a flood. Go ahead. The Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. The Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Meaning, up, no, you, you can't go but so far against my people. The Lord's going to start. That's why I'm not too worried. Because you can say you're not worried, but then when you see people falling, you see people get arrested, you're like, what the hell? And you want to pull your hair out. Okay, was that it, uh, Captain Zakai? Yes. From there, watch this, watch this. Give me Joel 2. It says the Lord will lift up a standard against them when the enemy comes against the Israelites like a flood. Again, I'm going to say it again. Don't think, just like in the South, remember during the Civil War, if y'all have known anything about history, when they sent the silk, when Martin Luther King went to try to, like you had before Martin Luther King, what's uh, James Earl Jones, portray, uh, uh, what's his name? He played a preacher, Vernon Johns. Mm. Vernon is that his name, Vernon Johns? Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Hey, look up Vernon Johns for me. Should be. I want to make sure I got the right movie. I want you to look at it. Vernon Johns. I think the star in James Earl Jones. I want to make sure. He was the. He preceded Martin Luther King. Vernon. I, I'm assuming it's right. James Earl Jones played Vernon Jones or Vernon Johns. Yeah, that's it. Y'all see that? Road to Freedom, the Vernon John story. He uh, was a civil rights activist before Martin Luther King. And when he got to this church, because they hired him, the black men and women didn't like, they couldn't stand his guts. Of course, he was trying to change the minds of black men and women. Of course, he said, it's easy to kill Negroes because, he says, what did he say? Mm. He said, it's all, he says, uh, Rabbits are more important than niggas because it's always open season on niggas every day. And he was trying to get them to stand up. So the whites came and said, don't stir up our niggas out here. We like the docile black man. We like the docile black woman. Now here you come, Vernon John, stirring up our niggas. Then after he left, Martin Luther King came in, did the same thing. So now, and they didn't have the truth as we know it today. Here we are stirring up the Negroes and the Latinos again. But this time with the word of God, you don't think there's going to be pushback? They pushed during the civil rights movement. They pushed during the time of the Greeks. They pushed during the time of Persia. This is what I've been showing you. Don't think we're going to do what we're doing and the dragon's going to sit back and not push. He's going to come against us. This is what we've been reading about today. Don't be scared. The treatment of God. We are not black men, we are the Israelites. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth.
So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.